church experience can remember the same song being sung twice, not often, not very frequent. In time we were in a waiting upon God years ago, and my brother Edward, who's here tonight, I have two of my brothers here, and he said in the first session, God taught him so many things. And we asked, uh, the Holy Spirit revealed that there was a song to be sung, so they sang that one. He said, I, I could sing that. He said, I could lead that myself. But the Lord didn't tell me to have him lead it. He told me to have Roger lead it, and Roger didn't know it. So he had quite a struggle with it. And when he got through singing it, I thought we did so poorly that we ought to have it as a solo. <laughs> My brother Edward said, now that's not ethical in his mind, you know. She said, he said to himself, he's the choir director, he said, now he's missed it, really missed it this time. <laughs> you try to have a solo son after a congregation did so poorly. So I asked son John, that never did sing it before, to come and sing it. <laughs> and do you know, precious ones, that in all probability it was one of the greatest anointings that was ever on that song and it was penned 400 years ago. We have never heard, John's never been under such anointing in all the days since. Now wasn't that remarkable? Because uh, Martin Luther penned that song over 400 years ago and the Holy Spirit uh, revealed to me that son John was singing it. He, never, he didn't know it very well. But God came upon him with such power that was clear beyond him. Clear beyond him. Edward, you never heard it sung like that? I never did. I know it. It, it just felt like heaven came down all around us. It was so great that the, the Holy Spirit just came and started singing through him with great unction and grandeur and glory and power and anointing and sweetness. After a while, the Lord revealed to me that a hymn was to be sung and told me my brother Edward was to lead that, and he didn't know it. <laughs> he said the Lord taught him so many lessons that first two hours. I thought that was encouraging, wasn't it, that he can teach us because we're all beginners and learning. I knew that song so I could have done it. Yes, sir. Well, see, I would have done it. But the second time, I was depending on the Lord mm -hmm. because that's what he wants. That's it. He utter wants dependence. So, he wants dependence upon him. Utter you. dependence. So it taught me that we've got to depend on him and not really want to do it except when he wants us to. Yes. Oh, yes. This is so, uh, so right and uh, the way it is. Thank you. I just feel on my heart to uh, give up the words to that song that uh, one of the verses that was missing yeah. my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the, the whole, whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord that's praise it. the Lord oh my oh it's a great stanza <laughs> aren't you thankful we're thankful that that's true yeah. Jesus took our sins away yeah. and so we don't have them anymore taken from us as far as the east is from the west. That's what happened to that young man the other day that I was praying with. Probably uh, one of the uh, most tremendous needy souls that I was ever privileged to pray with. And uh, the Lord came and just changed his life. 27 years of age. Just changed him. Took his sin from him as far as the east is from the west. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. Just he did it, I said, oh, there's a light on your face. He says, well, I feel it. I feel it. Just as soon as Jesus saved him, he knew it. All this burden was gone. All this heavy load was gone. And he says, oh, how long? How long have I borne this burden? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, he was so thankful. We were so thankful. The angels had right to rejoice in heaven because this precious person that probably was as needy as most people I have met when you think the glory knew him and knew him well. I had never um, seen a situation that hopeless in my life of all the friends I've ever had. Or and her father's a preacher of the gospel, a very precious man, and she's never seen 
Did you hear? She's never seen a person in that much hopeless condition. I mean, this would have given anybody hope. I mean, the faith, any, any situation, I've never seen one that hopeless. And uh, Vera Wagner told me once that hopeless situations are breeding grounds. It's the breeding ground for a miracle and for miracles. And I wrote that down and I've hung on to that and I've prayed for Randy for years and just about, I don't know how many years, six years. And the more I've got to know him, the worse he's got. I've, I've never seen anything like it. It's it grew worse all the time. Downhill all those years. And I, I just almost gave up because it was so hopeless. I would cry and pray. I would write him letters and poems. I'd do everything and it just like didn't faze him. And I just didn't know what to do. And I took him to the train that morning and, and I just would weep when I'd leave him because I thought it was just hopeless. I didn't see how, but I just believed. And a week later, he got off the train and the first thing I saw was a Bible. <laughs> he had it right with him. <laughs> and I got so excited in his face. He looked like he had, uh, he, was. he was 10 years younger. I know I've never it. seen anything like it in my life. It was a miracle. It was a present day miracle. And the people that saw him, he, I, he came back from the waiting on God and he was so broken still. I mean, he was just, his face just, he looked like he was dying. And yeah. he was dying. He was dying. Physically, oh, he yeah. was dying. Yeah, going down fast. And uh, you could see death on his face. Yes. And uh, yes. he came to church and it just broke everybody's hearts. I mean, they, and they, they tried to love him and it didn't faze him. No. Nothing. It was, I've never seen anything like it. And um, then when he came back, that week later, after being with you, the people just shouted when they saw him. I mean, his face was just lit up. I've never seen anything like it. It's just like 10 years came off of him. It was a light in his eyes, and uh, he was carrying his Bible around, and he had scriptures underlined, and he would take notes during the services and everything. And I'm just thankful. Completely changed. Jesus, I just had to give it up to Jesus. I know his parents have prayed for about... Probably 20, 20, 20 some years. Yeah, and uh, I'm just thankful. I, I, it gave me so much faith, and I've seen miracle after miracle in my life, but I've never seen one this wonderful. Before. This magnitude it just and gave greatness. Me faith. I, it, my faith just grew. Oh, just that quick to see him. Oh, yeah. If anybody could have known him before and after. Oh, oh. We have no doubt of the power of God. Again. Great. Right. I'm thankful. We surely praised him for giving us uh, guidance and wisdom to know what to do. Because we had to have exactly the words of Jesus in order to help us at that time. And Jesus was there in the Holy Spirit to give us guidance. And then the Lord performed the miracle. Just real quick. Just like that. It was just in a, yeah, just in a matter of seconds. He just spoke through me a certain few sentences, and suddenly he's in the kingdom of God. And we wanted to praise Jesus, we thank him, and all this great light that he sent to this precious son. So wonderful, yes. I think for him, my grandpa, I think for uh, uh, being here tonight. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes, we're sure thankful. Thank you, son. Thank you. I should say. Appreciate that.